Hi everyone, welcome. My name is NJ and thanks for joining me today on my presentation. I'm going to be talking a little bit about some custom visualizations and niche techniques in Power BI. Today I'm going to be talking about three main things, which is HTML visuals, calculation groups, and Denim. I want to warn you in advance that this presentation plays like a tutorial, so it will get very technical. So let's dive right into the first topic, which is going to be HTML visuals in Power BI. I'm going to be covering fonts, themes, and icons. This is a little what the end result could look like. Everything on this page is an HTML visual, including the text itself. We're looking at fonts first, so I'm going to show you that if I select a text and open up the filters pane, you can see there are three different filters. One is going to allow me to change the font into basically anything I would like it to show. There's 1,400 of these fonts. I'm also going to be able to change the font size. And I'm going to be able to change the color of the font. So if I want it to be black, I can do that. Uh, if I want it to be a, you know, it's a gradient, I can do that, that, do that as well. And, you know, if I want it to be a single color, I can change that as well, which I'll show you a little bit more later on in the presentation. This is the main DAX formula that I've been using, and I'm going to walk you through how it actually works today. And the first thing to understand is that this is a calculation group, and, this, and that's how the filter functionality actually occurs. To create calculation groups, you're going to need to have the external tool tabular editor. You need to download it online, which, you know, it's like will be in the description, I think. And once you've downloaded it, you can open it directly from Power BI from the external tools tab, which you can see right here. Once you have the tabular editor open, if you click on the table folder, you can create a new calculation group just by right clicking. And from the calculation group, you can basically right click again in order to create a new calculation item, which will allow you to type in the actual code that you want for the calculation group right in the tabular editor external tool. So going back to the DAX, the key thing here to note is that we're actually using the Google API that you see in this red uh, box to actually bring in the HTML and to bring in the font into this HTML. But there's a couple of things that we need to do in order to make this dynamic. That is, in order to make this um, adjustable using the filters, which is why we have these three variables. So let's take a look. The first variable is the actual text that we want to show. It's encapsulated in the measure, which is what you usually use to put text into something like a card. And you can change, you can change this measure itself outside in order to modify what text you'd like to show. You can also see that it's been altered to be formatted as a text. The second variable is the actual name of the font. Now, logically, if you want to have a number of different names in a filter, you're going to have to have that within Power BI somewhere. And I'm going to show you the steps you need to take in order for that to happen. What you can see right here is the developer Google font API, which is the web page you need to go to in order for this to happen. On that page, once you scroll down a little bit, it, it has this area, it has this button that says get a key, which you can simply click and it will generate an API key that you can use. And you're going to need to you have this API key because this is the URL that you're going to you know, it's like input into Power BI. And it, it won't work unless you have a valid API key. Once you've created a, an API key from Google, you can simply replace this uh, colored text in this URL, and it's going to be 
something that you use in your, you know, it's like Power BI to get the data. Simply select get data within Power BI, select the web option and paste the URL into the, you know, it's like window, uh, into the wizard box that you get with the actual API key that you generated. And once you hit OK, what it's going to show is this table where basically it has a lot of different units you know, like things from the API itself, but all you need is the second column, the one that's called items.family. You don't need anything else. So I usually tend to remove all of the other columns and I replay, rename the column name to font name or something like that. And I'll rename the table itself to something like Google fonts. And uh, as you can see, the actual second variable is the selected font. So I do create another measure that will simply be something like selected value of the column that I still have. And then we have our third variable, which is simply a numeric parameter from the modeling tab in Power BI. And you can see that I've just created a numeric range from zero to a hundred with an increment of one hundred, uh, you know, it's like make means that the maximum font size is up to 100. But if you wanted to have larger font sizes, all you would need to do is change the maximum value to something much larger. You can also see that in the actual DAX, uh, variable uh, DAX measure, it's been formatted as a text, but also has the, you know, it's like PX value, uh, you know, text right after it so that it will indicate if it's like a hundred pixels or something like that. That's what the PX stands for. Now we've gone through the variables, but I also want you to know that you don't necessarily need to have all of these steps in order to have a nice custom font for some text in your Power BI. If you want to be able to have just some static text, you don't need the, you know, it's like API key. You don't need this numeric parameter and you can have the text value even right in the measure itself. So I've shown that here, you can just put in the text value for the first variable, the name of the font you'd like to use for the second variable and the font size. I've made a mistake here. You need to put in the PX, uh, you know, to, to, to make sure that that works. But uh, once you've put that value in, you can use this measure the same way I'm about to show you uh, how to use the previous measure in order to get that custom font in your Power BI. Now, before I, before we go further, I also want to talk about colors right now, this code that I've been showing you only works in black. And that's because the color value here is static and it, it only shows black at the moment. That wasn't enough for me. So I created a couple of more calculation items for the calculation group with some small adjustments. This is the first one where I have a color variable that is simply a measure that I will show later on that is inputting a specific color into this, uh, you know, it's like into this HTML code. The color itself can be RGB. It can be a named value. I think hex codes also work, but I'll show a little bit more of that in just a second. And then because I as a person really love gradients, I created another calculation item in the calculation group in order to show to use in order to use two different colors to create a gradient. So you can see like uh, highlighted in the red boxes is the extra bit of code that I added to make this happen. Now, the last piece of the puzzle is that is you're going to need an HTML custom visual. There's a lot of different, you know, it's like HTML custom visuals you can choose and you can, you know, it's like get them by simply clicking the get more visuals button from the visualizations pane, which will open the app source. And in the app source, simply search for HTML and there's a whole bunch of them out there. I used this one HTML content by Daniel Marsh Patrick because he also created Deneb, but I understand there's uh, some other ones where you could 
put in CSS separate from the HTML. Honestly, I'm not very good with, you know, it's like um, HTML at all. This is probably one of the first um, pieces of HTML code that I created. And I don't know how to use CSS at all, basically. So that wasn't too useful for me. But if this is something for you, definitely check out the different options as well. And we bring this all together by first placing an HTML custom visual into the Power BI, you know, it's like report. And then you want to put in the actual value of the text. So this is what would be the first variable into the values of the HTML custom visual. This is what I showed earlier. It said this is text and it's just that first variable that you put into the values. And in order to get this kind of, you know, it's like effect of dynamic, of and in order to get this dynamic effect, basically what you're going to want to do is simply put in a couple of filters into the filters pane for the specific visual. You need to put in the font, which is the Google fonts uh, table that you, you know, like created. You're going to need to put in the numeric parameter so that it, you can alter the font size. And then you're going to have to put in the column for the calculation group. I haven't changed it, so it's the default name. And this will alter how you actually select the colors. This is once again the uh, report. And if we select this value again, open up the filters, you can see that, you know, we have the fonts, we have the color, we have the font size. And if I have the color font selected, I can select any uh, you know, okay, so it's not primary, it's the secondary. I can select any specific color and it will change the text into something else. So I have currently blues selected, but I can exit out of blues and I can put in any color that I would like the text to be. I can also change my settings so that if I wanted, to change this color using RGBs, then I can absolutely do that. So I've got a slider for red, green, and blue, and I can change what the color is going to look like in this way. The text itself, of course, if I want to have a gradient, then it'll use both the primary and secondary to create a gradient. And if I want it just to be black, I can do that as well. Now, I'm going to talk transition from, you know, it's like talking about the actual text itself, the font, and how we use this dynamic, you know, it's like way to alter the colors and the size. And instead, oh no, instead, I'm going to start talking about everything else on this page. Everything else on this page is also, you know, it's like um, part of what I would call the theme. And I'm going to talk about how HTML can be used to create this dynamic theme that you're seeing. So if I'm changing, you know, colors, you can see, you know, it's like not only is the text changing, but the icons and, you know, it's like the border as well. But let's focus on the border for now. So I want to give praise where, you know, it's like praise is due. Uh, a lot of this was built upon this idea that Flavio Menezes I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is uh, based on Flavio's work where he created a report that used exactly this concept of red, green, and blue sliders in order to affect what color should be used on the theme itself. And the way that it works is that there are essentially three different numeric parameters, uh, one for red, one for blue, one for green, from zero to 255, which is the maximum for the color setting in RGB. After having, you know, it's like these three different parameters, you would need a measure to bring those parameters together. And, you know, it's like from the selected values, actually bring them together to create a text like this one that you see here. RGB is really, really cool, but I also, uh, you know, it's like thought that maybe you can use something else. And it turns out in HTML, you can 
put the name of certain colors and HTML will recognize that text itself. So I found a table online that's, you know, it's like had a couple of these HTML um, colored names and I simply insert them into Power BI as a table. I had to do this manually with, you know, it's like copying the web page and pasting it into, you know, it's like the manual entry for Power BI, but I got it in there all the same. So something that I already mentioned is that I do love gradients and I wanted to expand a little bit on Flavio's work. So I wanted to have gradients, but I also wanted to have a background color. And that meant I needed three separate colors for three different sets of RGBs. And that in itself was nine different parameters. But I also wanted to have specific colors that you I could choose to be named. And that meant, you know, three different tables. So I'm going to put it out there that this is maybe not a technique you want to copy for business purposes. It's, you know, it's just something to showcase the kind of, uh, you know, it's like things you can do in a custom tool. But this is probably more effort than it's worth for most people. Now that I had two different ways of being able to input colors, so I had the RGB and then I had the name, I needed a way for Power BI to understand which one to use. So I created a table that had, you know, just this, these two values, RGB, these two values, RGB and name and a measure uh, you know it's like for the actual color would based on which value was selected simply use a switch function to input either the rgb value or the named color value <clears throat> So let's look, take a look at the actual HTML code and how these, you know, it's like parameters actually are being used. So like I mentioned, this was one of my, the first HTML codes that I wrote. And when I say wrote, I mean, I Googled different parts of it until I managed to splice something together that worked. So this part here which is the variable of for the color itself is what defines the color. And you can actually see that there's a gradient for the color one and color two. And there's another value, which is the parameter color percentage value, which is another numeric uh, parameter from zero to hundred to indicate how much color exists for color one in comparison to color two. So, I'm going to show you that in the report in just a second, and you'll understand immediately what it is. And what that code actually is, is this outer border right here. It's actually this outer border and you only see this, you know, it's like board, the border actually comes from the fact that we have one color in the background and then we have another, uh, you know, uh, HTML visual on top of it to create this border like feeling. So a little bit more about, you know, it's like how the input was created. I needed a way to differentiate, you know, because I had two different methods of inputting what color to use this pale, uh, you know, it's like, uh, this text, uh, you know, this named color method and the RGB method. So the way that I decided to do it was using bookmarks. Basically by clicking the plus, you could, you know, it's like navigates to, you know, it's like this one. And from here, pressing the minus would navigate back into this one. And that's basically the way that I decided to do it. I wanted to have some uh, smaller UI elements to make it a little bit simpler. Like for example, the border is the color that has been selected and um, the buttons here at the top also show what color is being used. You can even see that there is a parameter color percentage, uh, which is that other uh, numeric parameter that I was talking about. And even one more, this hue is also something based on Flavio's work, which allows me to have the background be a single monotone color with one, uh, you know, color selected and a lighter color, depending on this, you know, it's like value. 
And you can see that right here. So if I had select the parameter color to be slightly different, maybe I should change the secondary color to something more visible. So if I have the color be, you know, it's like in this format, you can actually see that if I change the parameter color percentage, you can see that the level of the gradient, you know, it's like alters depending on what value it is. I had to restart my PowerPoint presentation. If you have a Power BI embedded in your PowerPoint, sometimes PowerPoint can decide that it doesn't recognize your credentials anymore. So I had to re-log in and restart everything. Okay, so you can see that the parameter color alters what uh, level of color of, you know, it's like the primary and secondary color there is. And of course, if you click on this minus or plus, what is happening is that there is a hidden slicer depending on the bookmark that will indicate whether or not it is an RGB, uh, you know, it's like bookmark or a named color bookmark and thereby change the, you know, it's like a selection of how the colors are currently being used. So this is something that I, you know, it's like really enjoy. And that basically covers how, you know, it's like I would use HTML within themes. And here's a little bit of what the hue might look like as well. Just changing the colors a little bit of, you know, it's like the gradient in the back. But this code in itself is not something strictly used, uh, something that is just strict for the, you know, it's like colors, you can actually see as I'm working that the icons themselves are changing. So that's where we're going to go to next, talking about icons. And the way that it works is that this variable for color is directly affecting what is actually being, you know, it's like the color settings for the HTML visual, but the HTML visual shape it itself is simply being, you know, uh, decided by what's in this red box. And what's in this red box is simply a rectangle with slightly rounded corner values. So that means that the idea for the icons is if we change this specific text to be something else, to be an SVG, for example, then we can have icons that are dynamically changing color. So I'm going to tell you about how I do icons in Power BI from the very beginning. I like to use this website, remixicon.com, for two reasons. For the first is that you can use this uh, website to download 2,271 icons in one go, which is really nice and, you know, it's like very convenient. Uh, I'm actually going to, you know, it's like uh, use this for a very specific reason, which you'll see in just a second. But I also like the fact that it's a free to use item and, you know, it's like as long as you... You don't even necessarily have to mention them, but you know, it's like they're grateful if you do. I think it's wonderful that open source icons like this do exist for people to be able to use. Once you've downloaded the actual pack and you've unzipped it, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get data in the folder option. Once you do that and you select the folder that you downloaded just from remixicon.com, uh, you're going to get a table like this. The table is not going to be usable immediately because you're going to have the actual SVG values in binary. In order to be able to use them in your HTML custom visuals, you're going to need to transform them into text. And you can do that very quickly in Power Query by right-clicking on the content column selecting the transform option and transform to text and what you'll see afterwards is this table basically you can remove almost everything else but you're going to want to keep the content which is the actual um, S svg value itself and the name the name's quite important and i'll show you why in just a second So once you have an HTML custom visual, you can pull that into your, you know, it's like Power BI report. And once you do, you can basically use the content column directly in the values in order to bring out a, um, an icon. 
but in order to get the gradient, you, you're going to need to do something a little bit extra. And that extra part is this measure right here. You can see that it's very, very similar at the first part in um, with the measure that I was showing earlier for dynamic themes, but instead I have added a tiny bit of, you know, it's like, uh, functions of DAX functions here to substitute the, uh, beginning of the SVG, uh, this uh, open, uh, I don't know what this is called, open cross parentheses path with, uh, you know, it's like this value where open cross parentheses path is there. So it'll always have this initial, you know, it's like parts defining the colors in the beginning of the SVG. And this is essentially what it looks like. So if I select this one, which is just the content column itself, you can see that I'm actually filtering by the name. And that's why keeping it is important, because if you didn't have the name value and you were trying to filter by the actual SVG, that's just not going to work. It's really hard to parse. So having the name itself is a lifesaver. Yeah, you want, might want to set some uh, filter settings, like you can only select one value. And it, once you do, you can, oh, pardon me, you can, you know, it's like select different items depending on what you'd like. So there's 2000 of, you know, it's like icons that I put in here. So it's got a lot of different things. And if I wanted to look for something specifically, I might be able to find it. So unselect everything and I look for chart. Oh, maybe this isn't the exact version that I have. Nevertheless, that is, you know, it's like what it is. And it's pretty nice to have, you know, it's like all of these different, you know, it's like items. I even put in this, you know, it's like reports that I'm making an information button where I have all of the different icons that I can very easily see. And this uh, you know, color graded icon as well is basically just using the measure instead of the content column. And the same thing applies here. I can simply just select different items based on the name and I'll have, you know, an icon that can very quickly change its color. That took a second. Okay, so that was the part about HTML. I'm going to move on to talking about calculation groups because there's one specific technique in calculation groups that I'd like to share with you, and that is KPIs with context. Basically, what this looks like is here you can see three different values for sales, profit, and units sold. Calculation groups work on values by essentially, if you filter them, if you filter the values with the calculation group, it modifies what the actual values become. And using this, I can select a specific uh, calculation group like this. And it now shows not only the value, but the context in comparison to last year. So right now it's showing the increase from last year. And I can also do something else like here, I have two different cards. One's a little bit larger, one's smaller. And this calculation group is only affecting the lower values. But if I select this, now it's showing the current year, the, uh, the delta from last year, and the percent increase or decrease from last year. And I'm going to show you how you can do this. So this is the actual calculation group that I'm using to, you know, to like achieve this effect. There's four different variables that I'm going to walk through, uh, you know, it's like one by one. So hopefully you'll understand how to do this yourself. So the first variable is the selected measure. Selected measure is a specific function in uh, calculation groups that's being used to call whatever measure is being filtered. So in the case of KPIs, it's going to be the current year. That's exactly how you should see it. 
The second variable is the last year. So you have calculate selected measure same period last year. And that's basically only going to work if you have a date table. If you're going to try to use this text, you might want to alter the date table to be whatever, you know, the date column and the date table name is that you are using. But this is generally, you know, it's like something that is used by most uh, Power BI developers, a date table. It's not it's not crazy to have something like that but once you have the current year and the value last year calculated you can calculate the growth by uh dividing the current and not dividing dividing the current subtracted by the last year by the last year value into showing the percentage value we also have a fourth variable, which is going to be another function you can only use in calculation groups called selected measure format string, bit of a mouthful, but this is going to bring the actual text format string uh, to be used elsewhere in the actual calculation group. And you can see it's, it's used right here. Basically, the value that I'm, you know, it's like sending out is the current value. So the select measure in its original format. Uh, and if it's, uh, and if the growth is not zero, then if the growth is positive, put a upwards triangle and its percent. And if it's negative, you know, it's like put a downwards triangle and the percent. But everything is not as easy as it seems. If you were to use simply you know, this calculate uh, this calculation group and you want to filter a you know it's like value in this way, it won't be nicely formatted as you see in the left. What it's actually going to do is it's going to be not formatted at all, as you can see on the right. And this is a little bit because the um, the numbers themselves are, you know, it's like not being accepted as numbers in this value. It's actually being considered as text. And obviously this isn't ideal. So I'm going to show you how to get from here to here just now. In calculation groups, there is something called a format string expression. This is something you can directly access in the tabular editor external tool. And if you click on this, basically what it's going to have is just an empty box. But what this empty box is, is that you're going to be able to put in some code in order to modify how the form, uh, how the format of the selected measure operates. This is very cool because it allows us to directly modify how um, the fourth variable itself selected measure format string and thereby also you know it's like affect how uh, the selected measure is formatted within this calculation group now i've actually tried a couple of different ways to make this work i've tried using logarithms natural logarithms but i only tried this uh, at the advice of kane snyder from agile analytics i believe and uh one thing that he posted on LinkedIn one day was that he was trying some different formatting options using calculation groups, and he was able to generate the number of digits with a significantly optimized sp uh, speed improvement from using logarithms by simply modifying the value into a string with no decimal, so you know, converted into an in integer finding the length of you know it's like that value and from the length identifying if it's in thousands millions billions or trillions and i've tried it as well it is indeed much faster than using logarithms definitely you know it's like very cool stuff but the credits to this goes to kane so that's basically most of the information you need in order to replicate this, you know, specific method. And you can see that basically what I'm talking about here is that there are 
different variations. Like for example, in the very beginning, I showed that there was a way to show current and last year percentage, but also delta and last year. And in order to do that, you simply change the, what you're uh, showing in the measure from current to the growth flat, which you simply calculate as the current value subtracted by last year. And it, it works, you know, it's like pretty nicely. And you can see that again here. Okay, so that was the one technique using calculation groups I wanted to show. And I'm going to take a little bit of time now to talk about Deneb, which I think is the forefront of custom solutions in Power BI as of now. Deneb is this uh, custom visualization from the app source uh, created by Daniel Marshpatrick, and it allows for the use of Vega and Vega light language in order to create custom, you know, it's like visualizations to be used in Power BI. The main reason that Daniel says he made this was to overcome some of the limitations of Python and R visuals in Power BI. And honestly, I believe it does this really well. The two main drawbacks of uh, Python or R visuals in Power BI of when I was using them a couple of years ago was that one, they were quite slow, but also they did not have the ability to interact uh, with other, you know, you know, it's like visualizations. Most visualizations in Power BI have, uh, you know, interactions and they slice or filter other visuals, but R and Python visuals don't have this keep, uh, capability. However, you can do this in Deneb. It's a little difficult, honestly, for me, it's like very difficult because I'm still very new to Vega and Vega Lite, but it is possible, which I think is a major, major reason why you would want to use this as a custom tool. This is some examples of, you know, it's like uh, what the community has created in Deneb. Uh, I'd like to point out that uh, you can use this IBCS, International Business Communication Standards, type of charts that you see here in the middle. There are lots of gradients, which I've already said I love. And there's this one visual that I thought was very, you know, it's like nice because um, this is... A specific visual that I've seen in a lot of Tableau uh, reports where you have the, how do you say, the states of different states in America being represented as, you know, hexagons or, you know, it's like circles or something. But now it's also possible to bring in a visualization like that in Power BI using Deneb, which I think is very cool. So. How does it look like? How does it use, using Deneb actually look like for, you know, it's like the Power BI developer. When you first put Deneb from, you know, it's like, okay, so once you've downloaded Deneb from the app source into your Power BI desktop, uh, if you put that Deneb visualization into your, into your report, this is what it's going to look like. You need to actually put in some values into the values field in order for this to open up. And it's giving you exact information of what you need to do. Hover over, you know, it's like the visual, click on the three, you know, it's like uh, dots that appear at the top right and click edit in order to, you know, it's like essentially get started. Make sure you have all of the different, you know, it's like fields or, you know, it's like measures, whatever you want to actually show in the visualization in the values at the beginning. And you might not know what you actually want to show. You can change them, you know, it's like later on, but you're going to need, you know, it's like the values there to be actually used in Deneb. So once you, you know, it's like start, uh, start, it's going to ask you to create a new specification. Uh, in here, you're going to be able to choose what language you'd like to build the report in, uh, the visualization in, you, whether you want to use Vega Lite, whether you want to use Vega, or maybe whether you want to import the value from a template. Uh, I, I'll get into that in a sec, but if you select Vega Lite or Vega, you'll have some options to, of, you know, it's like some standard 
standard visualizations that you can input and if you select simple bar chart for example there there might be a visual showing what it looks like and it, you will be able to assign the values that you input into the values field into the specific fields uh, to create this visualization that's why you actually need to put in values into you know before you get to this stage because if you've only put in one um value like i have previously you're not going to be able to fill both of these with that value so it's not going to work out but honestly i i've never actually used uh the specifications for vega lights and vega i've a hundred percent of the time imported from template and i advise you to do so as well because importing from a json template is incredibly simple and is where the true power of deneb is Import, uh, if once you select import from template and select the JSON template, you it's simply going to open up a navigation wizard where you can open, you can find a JSON template that you've already downloaded. And once you open it up, it's going to allow you to, you know, it's like assign columns uh, or measures to the fields just as before. And you can hit create and it will generate, uh, you know, it's like, a different view for you that you can alter the visualization before it goes into your report. There's three different parts to the um, edit screen that you see here. Uh, the first part is the code area, which has the either the Vega or the Vega Lite code, depending on what you've actually selected. It has a preview of what the visualization will look like. And it has a table area, which will show the underlying data or logs or whatever you you know, it's like want to see about the visualization itself. One thing that I think is a little bit difficult is that it is, a, a, you know, it's like a code based visualization. So making changes to what, you know, it's like the visual, it needs to be done in the code uh, editor that you see here. That can be a little bit difficult for some people because uh, obviously Vega or Vega Lite, not so many people have used it. And you might be essentially learning a new language in order to do this. But the documentation is pretty thorough and it was very easy to, you know, to get started and, you know, to make modifications based on what my needs just by, you know, it's like using the simple, well, by using the documentation available online. There's a lot of resources for Deneb. I've put just a couple of these uh, here. Uh, I really, really like the fact that the Deneb um, documentation and the Vega documentation have, you know, it's a really great examples that you can use, but there's also a lot of Microsoft MVPs such as Kerry, uh, such as uh, Mike Carlo, who are maintaining their own, you know, it's like websites or repositories of uh, Deneb templates that are very free to use. If you'd like to see this uh, heat map with bars that I've created, you can find that in um, Mike Carlo's uh, repository as well. Okay, so that was basically the three different parts I wanted to talk about for this presentation. So I'd like to take a short moment to, you know, to like end this talk with just a retrospective about custom solutions in Power BI and what does it look like for the future? Because in all honesty, I think most people might have heard this if they're in the Power BI space that Miguel Myers has been, you know, it's like, uh, is now the program manager for visualizations in Power BI. And honestly, visualizations in Power BI have been mostly unchanged since Power BI's release, functionality wise. And that being the case, a lot of the things that Miguel has said uh, publicly, whether it's been on some podcasts or, you know, it's like different user group meetings, how, you know, it's like means that a lot of the different techniques that I've shown you might become obsolete. For example, within a podcast with Power BI guy, um, Ben himself, 
Miguel mentioned that uh, he does intend to allow different fonts uh, to be used in Power BI. Right now, there's only 26 native fonts, but the intention is to, you know, to include many more in the future, uh, which directly makes the, you know, say like HTML fonts a little bit obsolete. Maybe we'll see. Uh, there's also something that he's mentioned that cards will eventually not so eventually very soon be able to hold multiple different elements which makes the um, calculation group method of showing context uh, also going to be obsolete hopefully in the near future so it'll be more accessible for everyone and then uh, he's also mentioned that he does plan to make themes uh, dynamic. Something that you can do in Power BI Embedded is using the Power BI APIs uh, within, you know, it's like the embedded module. You are actually able to directly change what uh, theme is being placed over the visuals. And he intends to bring something like that into Power BI so that you could essentially have something like a light theme and a dark theme without having to have all of the confusion that, uh, you know, it's like nine parameters will give you in HTML. Now that I think makes a little bit of this presentation, you know, it's like obsolete and I'm okay with that because I, Although I really do enjoy custom you know, tech solutions, I really think that custom solutions are a little bit difficult for the average developer and not having to do like jump through a hundred hoops to get, you know, it's like the effect that you want is where we should be. Does that mean that custom solutions are going to go away? I really don't think so. I think that um, Power BI is always going to have the need for, you know, say custom visuals. I'm pretty sure that Deneb is not going away anytime soon. And I hope through this presentation that you have, you know, it's again, gotten some inspiration on how to create some custom solutions for your own designs. So thanks very much for your time. I hope you, you know, it's like learn something. I hope you can take something away from this. Take care.